Poppin' Tea Squad, it's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 9, Episode 3 Review. So I have some behind-the-scenes tea for you all. So it came out this week that Apollo, Phaedra, soon-to-be ex-husband, already ex-husband, we the fuck don't know, is engaged, y'all, to be married. So apparently he's been dating this chick since 2014, openly, y'all, openly. Oh, my God. So here's the chick, and this is how she looks. This is the girl, O-M motherfucking G. Her Instagram page is Queen Shireen. No, I think that might be, I might have it wrong. But anywho, so apparently, um, let me see what else I got on the girl. So they've been openly dating since 2014. They have a fitness company together called Night of Fitness. Here is her repping his little um, fitness company with one of his partners or whatever. Um, she will be on this season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And the T says that Todd and Phaedra both know about Apollo Nida's fiance, Shireen Almafiti, Almafiti, whatever. Bravo production team flew Shireen down Two weeks ago to film, Ty will act like he doesn't know her, but he does, just like Phaedra. Bravo gave Apollo fiance a $60,000 Rolex watch to wear and gave her a white Benz truck to drive while she filmed. Shireen was married before and shares a kid with her ex-husband, Derek Copes. Apollo and Shireen met in Philadelphia at a nightclub while married to Phaedra Parks. Girl, get into that motherfucking tea, y'all. I cannot wait for this shit to pay out on this damn show. Lord have mercy. So, the other tea that I have for you all is about Miss Sheree, honey. So, Sheree was seen in court this week. Here is her going into court in Georgia. This is Sheree right here going into court. Now, let me tell y'all why she went to court. A judge fined Real Housewives of Atlanta star Sheree Whitfield $1,000 and put her on probation for city ordinance violations after the reality star pled no contest for not having the correct... Cor certifications for throwing a party and shooting the production at her house without a permit. These hoes are throwing parties and shit without permits and shit while they sit up her organ on who house the best and they ain't even got their paperwork right. Catch this to y'all Miss Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore was also cited for shooting a scene inside of her home without a permit. Kenya Moore was a no-show in Yo, there was no show yesterday in Sandy Springs, so the judge extended her court dates next month. Ken Sheree and one of the Real Housewives of Atlanta producers will all be fined. Girl, I ain't got time to be playing with these damn folks. So that's the tea on them bitches. Let's get into tonight's episode because it really touched me and really hit home. So Portia and Fei Fei and Sheree meet for lunch. Portia and uh, Phaedra look like two bottles of Mass and Gill. They just look like they stink. Ken and her uh, fake booty are uh, exercising with Matt. And his wonky eyes. And Kenya, her fake ass, just look like a stiff cardboard mess. I did not like Sheree wet puppy dog wig sew-in little joint she had on. It It just looked wet and moist. I didn't like it. Sheree tells them about her and Kenya's fight. Uh, she denies that her house is in her mother's name. You need more people, bitch. I don't believe you. And nobody else does. We switch back to Kenya and Matt. Matt has invited Kenya to his family reunion. Um, so he's like 27, 28 years old and Kenya's like 40 something years old. So they have a major get, uh, age difference between them, which explains a lot of the bullshit that goes on in their relationship. So Candy's having a meeting at the restaurant. I mean, about the restaurant with her, you know, candy squad or whatever, candy coated click. When some crit chick named Chris Kelly pops by and everybody looks like she's a part of the walking dead. Like, who is this bitch? Like, dun, 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 dun. Everybody stop. Everybody is stunned. We find out she's a singer who signed to Riley's father's record label and she's his girlfriend. So Candy looking at her like, bitch, hey, how did you get in here? And bitch, why the fuck are you here? Todd is immediately pissed the fuck off with her presence. She tells Candy that she's always wanted to know why um, Block, the baby daddy, hasn't reached out to Riley and that maybe it has something to do with Candy's feelings towards him. 
First of all, bitch, you are way out of line to bring your high yellow ass up in her question to her about her relationship with her child's father when you are just his motherfucking girlfriend. And even with that being said, I don't give a damn if you was his fucking wife. You had no right bringing your ass in her questioning her about their fucking relationship that has absolutely nothing to do with your ass. And secondly, why in the fuck are you questioning her about a situation that this nigga needs to be trying to rectify? Why are you trying to rectify a situation on his behalf when he he don't even give a fuck enough to try to rectify it. And secondly, why the fuck are you with a motherfucker that don't have a relationship with his kid? That says a lot about your trifling ass that you will be with a man that don't have a relationship with his child. What you think when you have one with him, he gonna be a magical great father for your kids? Bitches are so fucking stupid. Candy is a better bitch than me because I would have cussed that bitch the fuck out and got her ass deported back to Jamaica or wherever the fuck she came from. But I digress. Let's continue. So Chris uh, asks is she willing to talk to him excuse you bitch okay Candy says that Riley will reach out and that he wouldn't be there which I 100% um, uh, uh, agree with Candy I believe Candy that nigga ain't never once had no damn dealings with that little girl um, Ty says that he's met the dude once Chris says that she's met Riley twice and wants to see if Riley and him can come together bitch that's not your place that's not your fucking place. Obviously, this nigga don't want to have nothing to do with his damn kid. He ain't even asked you to go do this. This is what she Judas out do on your own. Girl, you sound so fucking stupid. Um, Candy says, as you know, she has never blocked their relationship. Girl, this shit got me so riled up because this is my fucking life. This is my fucking life on a motherfucking platter. So, Matt and Kenya drive eight hours to his family reunion and Kenya complains the whole fucking way. Sheree goes to see cockeyed ass Bob. And at that moment, I realized that her and Kenya got way more in common than they even fucking realized. They both fucking with niggas with fucking fucked up wonky ass eyes. Both of they niggas eyes go everywhere but on them. Both of them ain't got uh, got fucked up housing situations. You motherfuckers should be best friends. So Bob makes her a smoothie and he's sweating like he just got out the pool. I mean, it's just sweat dripping everywhere. And this nigga is standing the fuck still, y'all. He just look a fat, tall, black ass, stank ass fucking mess. And I was like, ew, Sheree, you was married to this nigga. You slept with this nigga and let him sweat all on you like that. Nigga, no. Ugh. So, he asked Sheree, can he move into her place? He had the audacity to ask her, can he move into her place? She says that, you know, after her and Bob uh, divorced, that she dated a guy for a few years, uh, dated a guy for a few years. And I'm like, lies, you motherfucking tell. Sheree, you as gay as I don't fucking know it. Sheree is a fucking lesbian. Girl, if you don't stop it with the bullshit, bitch, you like vagina as much as I like dick. You like to carpet munch. You like to scissor. Stop it with the foolishness. So she says that Bob has to work before getting up in her house. Girl, you's a fool and a half. You let that nigga come stay with you in his sweaty ass, musty balls. So Cynthia, mom and sister come to visit her in Noel. Her sister, Mal, says that she talked to Peter several times. Um, excuse you, girl. You did what? Why are you on the phone with Peter when for the last seven, eight seasons since this motherfucker been on her, you can't stand Peter. But now that they're getting divorced, you want to kumbaya with this nigga on the phone and didn't even tell your sister that you had conversations with him until y'all was on camera. Cynthia, you should have took off that wig and slapped the shit out of her and slapped her so hard she fell off that fucking balcony. You got nerve, Mal. So, she says that Peter told her that he missed his wife. So the fuck what? And so Cynthia says that she just wants peace. She don't want none of that bullshit. She's over it. Faith Faith meets with Portia in the park to exercise. They both look like they stink. Portia and uh, her ex-boyfriend Todd are reconnecting, but she don't want to be in a relationship with him. She just wants his sperm to have a baby. Girl, so many niggas that shot up that club. I don't even understand why you ain't got pregnant by somebody already. But then I remember that she had fertility problems when she was with Cordell. And my thing is, Portia only want to have a baby because her sister had a baby before her. Girl, you ain't fooling nobody. He already got two teenage kids, mind you. And I heard in the blogs that he ain't shit and he a shitty ass father to the two kids. He got some bitch. You better pick better. Ken and Matt are um, having lunch with his mom dad and his sister they're giving her a hard time somewhat his mom wants to know her intentions with him his sister brings up their age difference his mom takes kenya's side but the sister's like what about matt and i'm like bitch are you fucking your brother like calm the down sit simmer down sister so she asks is kenya a cougar and 
I just felt like the sister was doing way too much. And if I was king, I would have told her, bitch, worry about your hair before you come talk to me. Worry about your 1992 boomerang Halle Berry inspired her to do before you come talk to me, bitch, about your brother. So Mama Riley <laughs> is going to the dentist. And Riley look older than Candy. Candy and her kids, <laughs> Candy kids have old people faces. I just saw her <laughs> up there. So Candy tells her, uh, that the girl Chris came by and, you know, wants to try to build a relationship between, you know, Riley and her daddy. And Riley, like, I don't want to have nothing to do with that nigga. And says that, you know, he should be the one trying to prove a situation with me. And I was like, Riley, you better speak the truth and shame the motherfucking devil. So Portia and Ty take a little fitness class together. She tells him about one the baby. And Portia, uh, the dude tells her, you know, I don't think I'm the man to help you with that. I want you to do it the right way. And he want to try to win her heart and they be in a relationship for real, for real. So Kenya is having a ball with the kids at the reunion. She's fitting in really well with his family. You can just tell that she wants to be a part of a family and wants that family uh, orient, uh, orientation into her life because she doesn't have that. Matt's, Matt's sister asked to speak to her and says that she's skeptical, skeptical about them. Bitch, we're skeptical about your hair. We're skeptical about your weight. But nobody's questioning you about that. Why you got your arms out with your fat ass? So she says Matt... Uh, talks to her and says he doesn't know if she likes him. And she uh, is, once again, concerned about their age different. Kenya says, you know, she loves him, but they do have problems that they need to work out. But if I wasn't serious about your brother, I wouldn't fucking be here. Um, Candy and Sheree at the end of the ex uh, episode are exercising together. And then they start talking about Candy, um, uh, baby daddy, and his girlfriend and stuff. Sheree vouches that since she's known Candy, she's never seen Candy talk about this nigga, ain't never seen him around Riley, nothing, vouching that this nigga ain't never even been in this little girl life. So then we switch to this nigga Block and Chris, who are meeting up with the singer RL from the group Next, and his, uh, I think they're either engaged or uh, to be married on the show, his uh, girlfriend, Lena. Chris says they've totally blocked him out. Bitch, you just lied right then and there. You don't know the situation, bitch. You just started dating this nigga however many years ago. Talking about they totally blocked him out. No, nigga. Your baby, your boyfriend blocked himself out of his daughter's fucking life while you sitting up here trying to blame everything on Candy and fucking Riley because of this deadbeat ass, crusty ass nigga you over here fucking. So, Candy spills the tea that Portia messed with Block 2 after him and Candy uh, broke up. And I'm like, who in Atlanta has Portia not fucked? Good God. So I think that's a part of the problem and a part of the beef that they're going to have this season. Remember, I told you, Funky Dineva said it was deeper than this old threesome ass shit they've been talking about. So Block says that he's helped out financially when he was able to do it. Lena asks, was he there emotionally for Riley? He says, you know, this is his exact words. If she don't urge my daughter to call me, I'm not going to make you come see me. What kind of ghetto ass, stupid ass shit is that? You a fuck ass nigga. And this bitch standing next to you calling you her man is just as stupid and ignorant as your ass. I hate niggas like that. You want to cry wolf. And act like you trying to be father of the year. And you ain't put not one forth, not one effort to be in this child's life. My son's father is not in his life. So I understand how Candy feels being a mother, uh, a single mother to a child whose father isn't in his life. I know how it feels to have my child sit and look at me and ask me why my father isn't there. And cry and ask, you know, what is it about me that makes him not want to be in my life? That is the worst feeling as a fucking parent. I have sat there and watched my child cry like... You know, somebody had died at the age of six when his father, who he had never met before in his life, you know, said that he was going to come see him and didn't. And my baby cried on the edge of the bed like somebody had died. And I vowed from that moment forward that nobody would ever be able to hurt my child like that ever again. So I understand, Candy, where she's coming from. I have never in this history of this show um, related to Candy on no type of level and to this storyline because this storyline... I mean, so many women can fucking relate to this shit. So I felt for Candy. I understood the tears that she was experiencing as a single mother with a deadbeat ass fucking baby daddy. That nigga block, bitch. You got hell to come up, hell to motherfucking pay. You got hell to pay, bitch. And that's why you look the way you do, because you trifling. And God ain't gonna bless motherfuckers like you. So, 
Um, Lena asked him, has he ever not shown up for Riley? He says once. He was a black ass lie. So Candy says Riley got tired of calling him and him not showing up. And Candy starts to cry and I start to cry too. Candy says, you know, when she told him she was pregnant, he said he didn't want to have anything to do with it. I know about that because when I told my child's father that I was pregnant with my son, he said, you know, the baby ain't mine and this, this and that. And like Candy, I was like, you know what, motherfucker, fuck you. I'm going to do what I got to do for my child, whether you want to be in my child's life or not. And you see what I've made of myself. And guess what this motherfucker is? In jail. Ha! Huh. Clink, clink. Hope, hope your booty cheeks is together, bitch ass nigga. So Candy says, um, no, the Lena girl asked him, are you going to take any responsibility on your part? And he says they need to have a conversation. And Sheree tells Candy, you know, people can change, but Candy isn't sure. Candy, I feel like you're doing the right thing. If Riley don't want to have a relationship with him, keep him far away because he's a fuck nigga. Only reason why he on this show is to obviously get a paycheck because he look broke as fuck. And he's trying to get a come up off of y'all so he can pay whatever little bill he got, whatever cell phone bill this nigga ain't paid. Girl, I get this episode of A+. Plus. Let me know down in the comment section what affected you most in this episode. Candy, I feel you, girl. I'm here with you, girl. It'll be all right. Riley will be all right. She has Todd in her life. She has you and 